Behold my hands, for they hold unlimited power. The Fool's Loot Bag, and we've got two of them. If you don't remember what we got last time, we had one of these. It was Choppy Muck Chop Face. And I'm going to be cruel. I'm going to tease you. You're going you're gonna to have to wait to the end of the video to find out what's in these bags. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Full Craft, and I've got a confession, I've been feeling a little bit dizzy, you know? Uh, maybe it's that arrow that's going through my head right now. <laughs> uh, welcome back everyone. Also, check this out, just below my chin, on my chest plate, there is a skull. There is a skull. Also, earlier it was orange, now it's white. I don't know why. Where has this skull come from? If you know, leave a comment down below, please. It is so strange that that has just turned up. It's sort of like in the location of a, a club emblem on a, on a football shirt, you know? Interesting stuff. I've got a feeling I've learned what that was before and forgotten about it from a previous mod pack. But anyway, I want to show you our experience, Obelisk. 114 levels of experience. Do you know what that means? It means our slime farm is working an absolute treat. And we are starting this episode off with no plan. Usually what I do is I read all of my comments, I make notes, and I figure out what I'm going to do in the episode. But right now I wanted to hop on and record because I got a fantastic suggestion. We're going to look in here and check out this thing. The Mob Masher. That is what I want. I only actually want four of those and we need to make some upgrades for this as well. We've only got Beheading, which is not the one I'm after actually. We want to craft some looting, so we've probably got all the resources we need for that. I'm not sure which other ones will help, probably sharpness, and that's probably going to be it, right? We're going to craft these things, we're going to set them up over at the slime farm, and by the way, we are getting tons of loot bags in this thing, just look at all the pets that we've gathered from this, and also, if I type in ring like this, this is how I gauge how many loot bags have been coming through, because they're quite rare, and now we've got 109 of them, but we've already got the best rings, so we don't really need to open those up, they're kind of useless to us now. So, let's go and craft a few things, some upgrades to this, maybe a couple of other things as well, and let's go and upgrade our slime farm. So why build four of these when one alone would probably do, right? It means we've got to make less upgrades overall. And in they go. It's not the fastest thing ever, so I'm thinking about doubling this. And you'll see some of the smaller slimes are a little bit slower to get killed here. But it's doing the same job, and now we've got looting. So I'm hoping that means we get more loot bags, but I reckon it just means we get more slimes. Uh, at least everything will be dropping XP, right? That's the main point. So we put fire aspect on this so they burn a little as well. Uh, looting and sharpness to kill them quickly. But the real the real deal here is being able to upgrade the solar panels, right? Because the more we upgrade this now, the faster they're going to spawn. And the more loot bags, the more resources, yada yada yada, you know what we're getting at. Now things are getting a little bit bonkers, aren't they? We might need extra mob mashers just because of the sheer amount of stuff we're producing down there. Actually, if you look at it, not all of the XP is getting picked up straight away. I'll keep my eye on this. Basically what I did is craft a stack of these. So this thing now produces enough power for this thing to run at full capacity. And remember it has that capacitor as well. Uh, so I added a battery so this thing can charge during the daytime. And it means it can run a little bit at night as well. So that is just going to provide us with so much more stuff. So check this out. Every time I press the letter T... <laughs> it closes and there's particle effects. I remember seeing that in a previous mod pack. No idea why that started happening. That's a recent thing. A couple of days ago I logged in and that weren't a problem. But anyway, look at all the pets that we've been getting from our new loot bags. And check it out, we got the dubstep pet as well. You know, a lot of these we're never really going to use too often. But, uh, you know, we're collecting them all. <laughs> and now we're throwing down. Oh, okay, let's put that back in there. So, what I want to do is create like a, a master import to our main storage system, right? I'm always coming over here and pinching different resources. And so I set this thing up. You can see some of the resources that I come over here and pinch. You know, we end up crafting these things a lot. And that goes into this ender chest, which is also hooked up to my pouch. So we can just chuck stuff in there when we're on the go and put it into our storage system. But we're not actually going to do that now. We require a lot more storage disks and drawers and things like that before we start to rely on that. So what we can do, thanks to a suggestion on my live stream, is hook this up using an ME cable to this bit over here. 
Now I'm going to put a facade on there just so it's nice and clean, right? And when we attach this thing, this is now going to become part of the network. And there's something that we want to avoid doing, which is items going into this large chest. So I open up the storage bus. Turns out you can put this into extract only. So that means that this thing will operate as normal. All of this stuff will keep doing what it does. But we'll be able to see these items over in our other system. And possibly vice versa. That's now part of that network, right? We may not even need to actually activate this thing anymore. Ah, look at that. And now we can see all the items from the other storage over here as well. I'm not sure if I actually want that. Like, sometimes it's good to be able to just sort through this stuff, right? So maybe I should actually separate this terminal and add another storage bus over here so I can look just into that if I want to. Uh, but that is going to be extremely helpful, meaning I don't need to make my little trips over here anymore to pick out some items. There we go, this thing now runs on its own storage bus, so we can still come over here and just look at the items in this colossal chest. So down here is the place where we've got a few drawers already. I think what we should do is expand this into a larger room with lots of drawers going around in a semicircle. At least that's the plan. And there's a big old pile of sewage over here stopping us from expanding. I'm kind of curious if the sponge pet can get rid of this stuff, right? It is a liquid. Let's hold down shift. Let's right click. No. <laughs> no, it can't. That probably means that this won't work either, right? Oh, cool. Oh, right. So the vanilla sponge works over here. That's excellent. That saves me a bunch of time filling that in and then mining it away again. Which isn't particularly tedious because this is modded, you know, and things are nice and easy. Because we've got vein miner over here. <laughs> So I wanted this to be our project for the episode. It certainly is going to be, but I've just cleared out the area and uh, I decided we're going to move on to something else. There's so much stuff that I want to show you and I will feel like doing building just uh, a little bit later. But quickly, I want to take off my helmet because I've got a torch in my hand and it made me realise that I've been relying on the night vision a lot and I haven't been thinking about uh, how things are lit up in, you know, inside the base. And of course, this is going to be very dark. <laughs> Yeah, very, very dark. So when it comes to actually building, I've got to remember to put lighting in here and take off my helmet. So, peeps, do you remember the beginning of the video where I said that we would open a fool's bag at the end of the video? Well, I can't wait. I really want to open one of these. We're going to behold the infinite cosmic power. And also, check out my uh, chest emblem. It's now RIP. Why does that change? What on earth is that thing? Oh, I can't wait to find out. Hopefully some of you know in the comments. So... What is this going to be? We we're going to open one now, one at the end. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness me, we can't even see the name of this thing. That is how epic. It is actually that epic that I... Wherever I put this, I can't see the name of it. What if I hold it in my hand? Queen of Hearts! Look at the size of this thing. Wow, so we've gone from Choppy McChopface to the Queen of Hearts... Oh my, oh my. So what's different between these two? It's got Knockback 20 on it. I see that. It's got Soulbound, Beheading X. Some of the other things in general are a little bit higher, I think. Some level 5 things going on there. It's got Shulking. I don't know what that does. And if we look at attack damage, wow, that's 100 attack damage more. Goodness me. Looting 3 on it. This thing had Looting 3 and Fortune 3. Off with their heads, not responsible for accidents. Actually, if we go further down, 7,900. And, oh my goodness me, is that... we got to try it out, peeps. We've got to try it out on a wither, right? Which is going to be... Oh, it's got Global, global Traveller on as well. It's going to be uh, an interesting one, an interesting one. So I've actually fought the wither several times. If we go down below, these growth crystals have been upgraded to the second type. In order to do that, I needed to kill loads and loads of withers, which I did in my live stream, and get never stars. And guess what? They killed me a bunch of times. So if we go into here, we can actually go back to where we fought the withers, uh, which is just down here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to try out the Queen of Hearts on a wither. <laughs> I've turned down my volume, don't you worry. I've got my... Obsidian armor on, so we've got extra extra health, and I've got the wither pet, so we don't take um, the wither damage. Now, if I stand near to that thing, the blast damage will kill me, so I always have to stand away. That's actually how I died the first time, and then subsequently died a load of times trying to get back here. And we were fighting, like, I think seven withers at once? Wow, two hits. The other one is three hits. And we got our never start, and we got a Ren Dog loot bag. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, but peeps, it gets even cooler than that. I got something amazing to show you, okay? 
I am going to take off my obsidian armor. Actually, let's just take off. I don't know what to take off. Let's go and grab what I want to show you. So there is emerald armor, which you make out of emerald blocks, and it has luck on it, which is pretty cool. Now, you might be thinking that this ain't going to make too much of a difference, right, to the drops we get from the wither. The way it works is the wither has a loot table, and that says that it's not affected by looting. However, this is modded, so something has clearly been changed because when we kill this wither, this emerald armor is potentially going to give us more nether stars. And this works for ores and all sorts of things as well. Okay, so this guy's going to explode. Come on, buddy. Don't be shy. Come over. There you are. <laughs> One, two hit kill. And how many nether stars did. None! This actually happened before. That's not terribly surprising. So sometimes you will get zero. On other occasions, I think we got up to four. So let's kill another one of these and see how many we get this time. All right, so we're going in for the kill. Remember, this thing has knockback 20. It's also fighting the witch. Let's try and knock you in that direction. Whoa, we sent that wither flying. Hi, now you're dead. And we got four never stars, right? That is incredible. Hi, let's knock you out of here. Bam. Oh, you died straight away. So what about mining uh, ores and stuff like that? Are there any diamonds around here? I mean, there's plenty of stuff that drops. Let's, uh, let's mine some redstone. So we've got two pieces of redstone in our inventory, and now we've gone up to 13. That is a lot more than usual, right? And if I use vein miner, we're going to get a redonkulous amount. <laughs> 59. So this isn't particularly accurate, but if we take this off and mine some lapis, we get 16. And if we put it back on and mine it again, we got well over 16 because we're now up to 40. Yeah, I think that means we've got 32, so double. This stuff is basically fantastic for getting more never stars and the like. Uh, we don't actually need any more right now, though. I just feel like killing another wither, you know? So we're going to kill this sucker with the Queen of Hearts and then get out of here. See you later, buddy. <laughs> it's lights out for you. Oh, we got another Thor. Okay, the three times I've killed a wither with this on, it's always been four that we get. Four or nothing, basically. <laughs> So we're going to use those Never Stars to upgrade our Mystical Agriculture Farm, which has actually had these solar panels up the top upgraded, so it produces over a 1,000 RF per tick, which is pretty fantastic. And then down here, we've added some capacitor banks to store some of that energy. So our conduit networks are a little bit smaller, and it means during the night time, when they're not producing energy, this thing can keep the farm running. So all adding to the overall efficiency of the farm. And down the bottom here, we have already upgraded these growth crystals. I've crafted another one, because you can apparently stack these underneath. And if you look at the description, it says, checks up to five blocks up or down. This one does 10, so with growth tier three, we we could have 10 of these below growing the crops up the top or maybe it's a little bit less than 10 but you see what I'm getting at now in order to get that third level though we need to go to the end and we need to fight an end dragon and get ourselves a dragon egg which should be pretty fun that'll be an adventure for the future for now though I want to see if it makes a difference and I did a little trial run when we upgraded from growth 1 to growth 2 didn't really see an immediate effect but now that I put growth 2 on it does seem slightly faster Nothing crazy, but it seems to be making a difference. So fighting those withers, we got some Fool's Loot Bags. And the one that I really want to open is Iscals. I'm curious if there's going to be some Iscalium in here. And there isn't. Unfortunately, yeah, retro. I was going to say old school Iscalium. I'd like to set up an Iscalium reactor in the future. And at the moment, we are on... Oh, 14. I think you need 9 to make a block to get one thing to get the reactor going. I need to look into that more actually, but we're going to need to get ourselves some of those. So I was hoping we'd find them in the loot bag. Now, the other ones that I haven't opened yet this season, and I think they're the same as last time, are Good Times with Scar, and I think we opened Falses, but I always get a load of comments about there being something valuable in there that I've missed. Jelly, the Wither Cat, awesome, and a wheelbarrow. That's kind of cool. So what is it in here? This thing, uh, some people I think have been telling me that that actually does a lot of damage or it has a special property, but it's not obvious looking at it though. I think I see what it is now. All that crazy garbled text, well one of them says armor piercing attack damage and the other one says god slaying attack damage. So maybe this kind of like bypasses armor and actually does a ton of damage. I'm going to keep that in my inventory. Uh, maybe we could try that on a wither. I've got a skull on me again, I don't know why. <laughs> I've also got my weapon which is actually on my back check it out and then I hold it and it's been taken out pretty cool right 
We're going to try this on a wither, and in order to fight this wither, I've built a little wither killing area. We're going to walk over there so you can see how these temples are spaced out from one another. So one of the things that I want to do this season, are you ready for it, is have fun. <laughs> okay, have fun. Not everything has to be about super duper automation. Sometimes it's actually fun to just get in the world and do things yourself. And that's how I feel about killing withers at the moment. Now in the future we might change that. So this is as far as we've got. This is in the way, I haven't moved it yet. But it's going to lead through our path to this one here. So again, advancing towards beef because eventually we want to hook up everything together with paths and be able to walk around our wonderful base. So this is the temple where we're going to fight the withers. And you can see it's just a little bit different from the others. Always trying to throw some variation in there. And we have some black stained glass at the top. And down below we have some witherproof glass. So there are lots of witherproof blocks in here. And also I've got night vision on. So this is actually kind of alright to look around. But once that wears out, it's not going to be so good. So we've got some witherproof glass right here. And there were two different types, okay? I've got to show you the recipes because this one was a little bit more expensive to make. It's dirty glass and obsidian, so a couple of layers of crafting. And what's weird about it is it isn't really glass. <laughs> you can't see through it, which I'm wondering is a bug. Okay, I think my night vision wore off, and it's actually not too much of a difference down here. I guess it's daytime, so the light from above is lighting everything up. So anyway, the other option was to use this right here, right? We've got thousands of this essence, so that was no problem. And the soul glass is just glass and soul sand, so that was really easy to make. And also, there's another block like this as well, the witherproof block. So these two are from Mystical Agriculture. They're both blast resistant. And the other one we can use as well from Ender.io is quite expensive. So I've used a few of those in here just to kind of break up. Uh, the blandness of it all right now I've got one thought about this room and that is this block here is not blast resistant okay so it's probably gonna get blown up in which case I'm gonna be stuck down here anyway what we need to do is make a wither of course there's my soul sand there's our skulls we've got the wither pet and we have this weapon which Kiko Kiko Kuru <laughs> Nope, I bet I've not got that right in the slightest and I'm going to get a gazillion comments from people telling me how rubbish that was. Okay, you've got upside down hats. Now I made this room big enough um, for us to stand in so we don't get hurt by the blast of the wither when it, when it blows up like that, right? So that's why the room is the size that it is, rather than putting the wither in a very little cage. And that means we can come down here and just have some fun and kill some withers when we want. What did I say I would do? What did I say I would do? I'm saying all sorts of things, talking about the upside down hats, I meant upside down trousers. Goodness me, I'm terrible at recording and talking, aren't I? I'm placing the wrong blocks now. Right. <laughs> uh, I said that we would use the Kukoku. <laughs> That's how I'm going to say it. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to use this like a pro. Check it out. Alright, we've got to be careful though, because we don't have life steal. So we get in there. Oh, that did not do a lot of damage. Oh no, it didn't, but it did make a fancy noise. Huh. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> See you later. Right, and it blew up the elevator block. Didn't I say it would do that? Oh, damn it. I wonder if these blocks are movable with pistons. We can make a little swapping mechanism, but how would you activate it? Because you couldn't put a button in this room. That would get blown up. Bam! See you later, bat. <laughs> I said earlier that we'd be working on this room, and if we lit up this room, there wouldn't be so many bats in it. But anyway, what we're going to do is obviously have loads of drawers down here. And I want to separate these into different drawer controllers rather than have one for everything. Don't ask me why. There's probably not too much of an advantage to that. But that's just how I feel like laying this area out. And getting in the way of all the places you could stand, you wanted to be there. Foolish bat. <laughs> yeah, so we can lay it out like this. And that gives us a total of eight different places to put the drawers. And this is pretty much going to be the size of the room if you just imagine all the drawers um, around there. So over at this end, we're going to add compacting drawers. Now, earlier I talked about that importing and exporting system. Actually, it was just exporting from our colossal chest. <laughs> uh, and importing it over here, I guess. But it turns out that's actually going to be something we need to do in the long run. And here's why. So storing stuff in compacting drawers is always a good idea with something like Applied Energistics because it's able to see all the different materials in there at the same time. One of the things that I've crafted a lot this season is capacitors. And these things require gold nuggets. And I'll tell you, the amount of times I've made those are ridiculous. So if we put some gold into there, it would make gold blocks, gold nuggets 
and the golden ingots as well, just from that material. If we type nugget over here, though, without it taking us somewhere else... Okay, that's... Apparently, pressing the button U doesn't do anything at the moment. There we go. You can see that we've got lots of these from inventory pets. Now, they're currently inside that colossal chest. If we were to put those inside of those compacting drawers, we would see the other things that they can make. And that is going to help us with crafting stuff in the long run, right? Now, if you haven't seen one of these before, I'm going to go down and place it. I'm sure many of you have, but you put that in there and you've got all three materials. I can take a gold block, I can put that back, or a nugget and it kind of stores the value of all of them, you know, which is extremely useful. You might be looking at that and thinking, Asuma, oh, you, you're colour coding it, aren't you? Well, do you know what I've got to say? Taste the rainbow, my friends, taste the rainbow, look at that. <laughs> Lovely. Getting in the way again, are you? Getting in the way? Watch out, you get murdered. <laughs> Uh, last season on Fallcraft, I set up all these drawers and there were so many different ingots that it was like, oh man, you could like make a rainbow effect going on here. It's not perfectly laid out, but they are kind of grouped together by colour, right? And these bats, man, they keep flying in my face the whole time I was building this. They are making it a right pain in the backside. I'm just messing around with some building ideas here, and then this fella comes along. Oh, you're going to be tricky, ain't ya? Hey, we got ya. Cool. <laughs> Which reminds me of something I want to show ya. First of all, though, I started off with this, and I felt like this needed to be pushed back a bit, which, um, sorry, not the pillars, these bits, which I'm not too sure about. That's it when it's pushed back. But the one thing I really want to do is find a way to include this block and not have it pop out and look so bright. I want it to really feel like it belongs and go alongside the marble. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I wasn't actually planning on recording, but that's what I've sort of done so far. I'll keep playing around with it. Yeah, we got this over here. Oh no, it lost its hat. Oh, that sucks. I thought it would keep the hat. Well, I put a name tag on that sucker. It had a really cool hat on it. And I was going to put this one in the cage as well, but I guess it's going to eventually lose its hat. Well, you're free to go, I guess. <laughs> uh, also, over here, I put our building blocks into this. So this is our way to go and look at what options we have. Although, some of these I don't think we're ever really going to use. So we'll probably get rid of them at some point. So at the beginning of the video, I showed you this. And we're going to have to reinstate it again. So we need to extract tons of items, really. I need a much better... Uh, system than this for choosing which items we want to extract but they all need to go in there and only a couple of them are active at the moment so I haven't set this up correctly always active there we go nice and now we should see yep yeah, loads of stuff piling in there now this time when this stuff comes through some of it as you can see isn't to do with our drawers but other stuff will go in there and start making the blocks and the other items as well and to do this we're going to use an import bus and I'm literally going by the name of this block okay so around here we've got a bunch of technical stuff that really needs tidying up so this probably ain't going to be a permanent location but if we slap that there and if I put it on this side, it should connect, yes, like that, to that cable. And there's nothing else here other than that, which I'm guessing is a filter. And it appears to be taking items out of there as well as items are going in. It looked like the emeralds were moving. So let's go down to the room below. And I've done a lot of building here, okay. I feel like the shape and layout of this room isn't that great for making something that looks cool. And obviously the floor and the ceiling are very flat. And then do these colours work together well? I'm not sure. I kind of like it. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised at how good these two textures look together. But anyway, not to get distracted here. Around the back there is um, the controller and that's been hooked up. So we came over here to see the emeralds and you can see they've gone up a little bit. I don't actually see that number ticking up at the moment. There you go. It's the iron that's going up at the moment. Awesome. So that means it's working. Now the next challenge for us to do is to get some of the items off of the discs that we have here. As you can see, they're mostly pretty much full. And get them down into the drawers below. And for that, we are going to need something that is an M-E-I-O, I think it was called. And I can't see it. I just got an achievement called Storage Cell Shuffle. This thing is called the MEIO port. Scalder told me about this. I was searching for disk manipulator and I couldn't find anything. Um, so I'm guessing we slap this down as part of the network. Let's just put it there so it connects. 
Does it have a cool interface? It has one that makes complete sense. You put a disk in one side and it's going to put it back into the system. Now I don't think it will be able to take everything off of these disks and we should probably start with one of the small disks right here. Um, hoping that there's some of the materials we've got for those drawers on there right now. So is it doing something? Do I click on that button? Oh, transfer data to storage cell. Let's do it that way around. Okay, I think it did everything it could because those numbers have popped down a little bit, right? So it's probably moved some of those items onto other disks and some of them into the drawers if it can do. Because we don't have a fresh new disk, it means that this isn't probably going to work as efficiently as we like. You can see straight away stuff is actually getting filled up pretty quickly. So let's take, uh, let's take a larger disk and it's probably not going to do too much at all, is it? In you go. Uh, we Oh no, it did it straight away. And it's probably making a difference. Right, so if we go down below, can we see some of the numbers of these going upwards? I think we can. Yep, those are definitely a little bit higher. So are they. Yeah, quite a few things have actually gone up now. Okay, that's awesome. Well, here's another thing, right? If I take every disk out of there, then what's in the storage system is those drawers. So if I run all of these disks through that, they'll at least move the items onto the drawer. I keep instinctively holding down shift when I click on that which makes no sense whatsoever. Now I don't think this will break anything by leaving it empty for a moment. Um, if we chuck these things in though we should see some numbers move in or maybe not too many at all. Oops that's the wrong way around. <laughs> Does any of the numbers change when we do that actually? We should check that out as well. Okay so that one's doing something. It's moving stuff down below. This is kinda cool. Alright then so now let's do it the other way around. Oh, it's finding stuff to move onto it. I'm not sure if that's actually how we want to do this. Okay, let's put that back. Hmm, I wonder what it moved back on. Very curious, very curious. Anyway, if we chuck these back in here, we should see... Yeah, we've got some green lights, less orange ones, and a couple of reds. That's overall pretty promising. And let's get down to the room at the bottom. And again, we should see... Oh, look at that. Gold has flown upwards. Okay, yep, quite a few other things here. Look at these ones, yeah. Seeing lots of numbers where we didn't exactly have them before. Look at that. That is a crazy amount of cobalt. That's from where False has been farming. I've fallen down here. Jeez, I don't want to go down here. That's from where False has been farming uh, loads of blocks with the fluid cows, right? So, coming back up here, now when we open this, what we should see... Yeah, lots of nuggets at the top, that makes complete sense, and lots of blocks of metal stuff as well. Excellent! It's worked! We've done it! And we found out how to manipulate the discs as well, which is pretty cool. So what I'd like you to do right now is go down to the comments and let me know your thoughts on this room, the layout, the shape, the colours, anything you want to let me know. This is all open for change right now, so any ideas would be... Uh, would be more than welcome. And I said that we'd be opening these bags at the end of the episode. Of course, we opened one earlier. The Queen of Hearts, by the way, has been whispering to me while I've been playing, telling me to murder stuff. Whispering to me in chat. Okay, I'm not hearing noises in my head. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's open it. What are we going to get? Oh, it's another crazy weapon. The Sunblade. Okay, so that one does 8,000 attack damage. This one does less than Choppy McChop face. 500 attack damage. Totally not a lightsaber. I, I now absolutely want to hold this and swing it. I've got a lightsaber, peeps, apparently. What does it do that the others don't? I don't really th see anything other than glowing on there, so maybe uh, it emits light while I'm standing here, but of course we've got night vision. Anyway, that's going to be it for me this episode, peeps. Really do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you so much for your support on this series, and I'll see you in the next episode of Fullcraft. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.